Catherine and Michael walk into a bright white room, amazed by their surroundings. Catherine sees a red button and urges Michael to press it. When he does, a voice announces that they've been chosen to stay in the room for 50 days, with a chance to win $5 million. If one leaves, the prize drops to $1 million for the other. Excited, they run around, then lie on the floor, questioning if it's all real. Michael feels lucky and grateful, while Catherine suggests sharing the winnings. She asks about his plans for his share, and he dreams of never worrying about money again, creating real art and exploring space. Soon, Michael realizes how empty the room feels. In the bathroom, the voice states only one person can enter at a time. While Catherine is inside, Michael reads the rules and presses a food button, which gives him a milk box. Michael tastes the milk box and remarks that it's not like Shake Shack. Catherine smiles and wonders if breakfast might be better. While Michael explores, Catherine sets the automatic lights to turn off at 10 p.m. and the wake-up alarm for 7 a.m. She checks with Michael, who says she can choose any time since he plans to relax and stay in bed. The lights go out, and the voice announces that it's evening. As they settle in, Michael tries to have fun, but Catherine feels nervous. She suggests they keep it quiet, worried that Professor Voyan might be watching. The next morning, Catherine stands in front of the mirror, saying positive things to boost her confidence. After her shower, she finds Michael already awake. He playfully takes her towel, and they both laugh. Later, as she eats breakfast, Michael jokes that their clothes make them look like they have mental health issues. Concerned, Catherine asks why Professor Voyan is doing this. Michael then mentions checking the link in the description. Catherine realizes he's talking about a documentary called Fame, made by Professor Voyan. It follows a family in America who received $150 million to become famous like celebrities. Initially, everything went well. They got big contracts and TV shows. But things took a dark turn when the mother found her husband with another woman, shot him, went to jail for murder, and then the son disappeared while their daughter overdosed. Catherine asks Michael why Professor Voyan did all that. He replies that no one really knows, but Voyan has a lot of money. He mentions that 30 years ago, Voyan said he was curious about people. Feeling uneasy, Michael looks at the clock counting down their days. Suddenly, the lights brighten, announcing it's midday. Catherine tries to meditate to cope. Later, Michael admits he dislikes white because it feels colorless and he's frustrated with the clock for moving backward and forward. Catherine tells him he can't change it, but he worries they won't know if they've really spent 50 days there relying only on the clock. She teases him, saying it's too early for conspiracy theories, but Michael continues to complain. He notices the lights change to mimic nature, and just then, they turn off. Catherine urges him to relax and focus on their goal. Despite her words, Michael can't sleep while she drifts off easily. The next morning, Catherine encourages herself with positive thoughts. When she comes out of the bathroom, she finds Michael looking confused. She urges him to take a shower, and they both start trying new activities to fight boredom. They jog, play, and dance, while Catherine meditates and Michael runs, constantly watching the clock. But soon, the stress begins to take a toll on them both. Days later, as they sit in silence, Michael spots a bug on the floor. He starts chatting with it, saying there's nothing to do in the empty room. He names the bug Cluey, but Catherine doubts it will survive long. Michael rushes to get some food to feed it, but the voice informs him that the food is for contestants only. Disappointed, he insists he just wants to let the bug out, not leave himself. Catherine warns him not to open the door, as it could mean he's quitting. Michael argues that the bug deserves freedom, and the voice reminds them that if one leaves, the prize drops to $1 million. Catherine thinks it's just a bug, but Michael accuses her of lacking compassion. She retorts that he only became vegan to annoy his wealthy dad, who always provided for him, undermining his artsy image. Upset, she walks away, but accidentally steps on the bug. Shocked, she apologizes, but Michael ignores her and leaves. A moment later, he announces he's getting a treat. Catherine reminds him it will cost $100,000 from his share, but he still goes for it, ending up with a green crayon. He stares at the wall, thinking about where to begin, and starts creating his art. 
Catherine hugs Michael from behind and asks him to draw her portrait. She poses while he starts using the crayon. She wants him to draw it realistically, but he finds that boring and prefers his own style. Frustrated that he won't do it her way, Catherine walks away feeling like he doesn't care. Michael continues drawing until the crayon is almost gone, then washes his hands. Catherine gets annoyed when he leaves a stained towel on the floor and crayon marks in the sink. After cleaning up, she sits beside him and apologizes for her earlier behavior. Trying to lighten the mood, she reminds him they only have 20 days left in the challenge. Later, while in the bathroom, Catherine gasps when she sees a gun on the sink. She asks Michael to check it, but he's scared it might be loaded. She suggests he dispose of it in the laundry chute, but the voice warns that it's only for laundry. With no other choice, Michael kicks the gun under the bed. Soon after, the voice announces that a message from a family member is about to start. Michael gets a video call from his sister, and he feels happy but his smile fades when she asks if he went to the Immaculate Room to forget Catherine, saying it was best for him to leave her. She also tells him to move on and forget about Sean. Right after Michael's message, the screen changes to show a picture of Catherine's father, surprising her. Catherine yells for the video to stop, not wanting to see it anymore, but it keeps playing, and her father asks to meet her. He says he's been off the streets for a year and is living at St. Mary's Shelter. Michael tries to comfort her, but she pushes him away and curls up in a corner, crying as her father sings a song from her childhood. The next day, Michael finds Catherine still in bed, refusing to get up. She tells him it was her father in the video and admits she lied about him because she was ashamed. He drank away their home and her school fees, making her life difficult. Frustrated and with nothing to do, Michael starts losing his mind even reading the tag on his shirt over and over. He eventually joins Catherine on the bed just as the lights go out. Unable to sleep, he stares at the clock, worrying about what's to come. In the morning, Michael wakes up on the floor and encourages Catherine to take a treat, saying it will help her. He reminds her they have 18 days left and that it might lift her spirits. He's concerned she's losing her grip, but she insists she's fine and plans to stick to her routine. Later, while lying on the floor with spilled food around him, Catherine tells him to take his second treat. He heads to the screen and is surprised when a woman named Simone walks in, introducing herself. Michael is confused, and when Catherine arrives, Simone asks about the room. Michael explains the immaculate room, but Catherine doesn't believe Simone hasn't heard of it. Simone introduces herself as an actress hired by her manager for a month. Catherine then tells Michael to give his shirt to Simone, which he quickly does. Simone walks around the room, saying it reminds her of the studio where she used to dance. Catherine isn't happy about the situation, and Michael insists he didn't know this would happen. Simone admires Michael's artwork, even recognizing his style. Catherine interrupts, asking what they should do about having a stranger with them. Just then, the lights turn off. Michael explains that the lights go off automatically at night. Since there's no extra bed, he offers Simone his spot on the bed with Catherine while he sleeps on the floor. Feeling shy, Simone says she'll stay awake. Disappointed, Catherine insists there's enough room for all of them, and Simone happily agrees. The next morning, Catherine wakes up to find Simone missing. Thinking she's left, Catherine feels relieved, but then discovers Simone in the bathroom. After Simone finishes her shower, Catherine decides to take a treat to relax. She finds a small bottle of Cloud Nine pills and takes one, warning Michael to skip this round. But Simone urges them both to join her, and Michael takes a pill too. Soon after, the pills start to kick in, and they have a great time. But then Michael suddenly collapses on the bed. As he watches them dance from a distance, he notices blood everywhere. The blood swirls around him, and he suddenly falls into water. While struggling underwater, he sees Sean diving into the pool. Michael tries to reach Sean, but Catherine and Simone shake him awake. Tearfully, he gets up to leave, but Catherine stops him, urging him to think about the prize money. He lies back on the bed, apologizing to Sean while Catherine comforts him. Later, Simone asks Catherine who Sean is, and she explains that he was Michael's little brother who drowned while Michael was in charge.
At the time, Michael was high and couldn't save him. That evening, Michael splashes water on his face, trying to pull himself together. Afterward, Simone invites him to sit with her. Feeling down, he starts to share his story, but Simone reveals that Catherine has already told her about Sean. She then shares her own pain, talking about her mother who died in a car crash when she was 12. Michael cries, realizing that love is what helps heal the pain of loss. While they talk, a jealous Catherine interrupts, asking what's going on. Michael assures her it's just a conversation, but Catherine angrily points out they're discussing a young girl. Simone retorts that Catherine is insecure, and in the heat of the moment, Michael shouts and storms off. After he leaves, Catherine thinks it might have meant nothing, but Simone hints that perhaps it wasn't so simple before walking away. The next day, Catherine knocks on the bathroom door, asking Simone if she's almost done, but there's no reply. She decides to open the door and finds that Simone is gone. Regretfully, she tells Michael the news. Spotting some writing on the wall, she calls Michael over, pointing out that it seems to suggest something about Simone while she was asleep. Confused, Michael insists nothing happened, but Catherine points out that Simone looks like his ex-girlfriend. Angry, Catherine pushes him, causing him to hit his head against the wall. As he starts to bleed, she rushes to him, claiming it was an accident. He pulls away and asks if he has ever cheated on her, reminding her that he cut ties with his wealthy friends because she felt uncomfortable and didn't attend art school due to her depression. Michael tries everything to make Catherine feel happy and secure, but he feels like he gets nothing in return. Frustrated, he collapses on the floor, deciding they need to leave the room. Catherine tells him to wait and quickly grab some food and a towel. She puts the towel on his head and tries to make him drink, but Michael insists he needs a doctor. Unfortunately, their contract doesn't cover medical help. As he weakly leans against the wall, Michael realizes that Catherine doesn't seem to care about him and is willing to let him suffer for the money. She denies this, but when he asks her to leave with him, she refuses. Determined, he gets up and walks toward the red button. He explains that the room is like a mirror, testing their morals and spirit, and they're clearly failing. Catherine insists they should stay, but he argues that staying is wrong. Catherine stands firm in her decision, but Michael decides he will leave, with or without her. As he approaches the red button, Catherine yells for him to stop. When he turns around, he sees her trembling with a gun, insisting he can't leave. She claims he's being irrational to throw away millions. Michael calmly replies that the room is messing with her mind, and despite her warning shot, he turns to continue walking. Michael walks straight to the red button and pushes it, stepping outside into his freedom. A voice thanks him for staying and informs him that the prize money has dropped to one million dollars. Catherine, hearing this, is crushed and falls to the floor in despair. Days pass, and Catherine remains in the room, but she spends her time crying, shouting, and staring at the wall. Two days after Michael left, she slowly approaches the red button, reaching for it. Meanwhile, Michael is running down the street when he spots Catherine coming out of the Saint, Mary's building. They greet each other awkwardly and apologize for what happened between them. Catherine tells him she was visiting her father. As they walk to her car, Michael asks if she succeeded, but she sidesteps his question and asks about his life instead. Nearby, a plaque on the side of the building honors an anonymous donor who helps keep the new saint, Mary's kitchen running. Soon after, a new couple arrives at the Immaculate Room. Sandy Williams and Jason Wright can hardly contain their excitement, hoping to win the prize. As Sandy looks around, she feels hopeful that the Immaculate Room will change their lives for the better. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and stay connected with us.